Hey guys, welcome to the 30 Paintings in 30 Days project. Right, if you so. choose to join me on the 30 Paintings in 30 Days journey, I hope that you do share and tag me in posts like on social media and stuff. Maybe film some videos, tag me in the description, something like that. Um, I am um, kind of excited about the project. I do do daily drawing. I don't necessarily do daily painting, but making a daily practice out of something like this encourages you to... Um, get better at it, um, encourages you to work it into your daily routine or weekly routine. Um, it also is a way to use up supplies. So if that's your goal, uh, maybe you don't want to do 30 paintings in 30 days, but you want to do 30 collages in 30 days. So that works too. So let me know. Let's get to painting and I'll see you. Hey there. guys, we are here for painting number 22 of our little experiment of 30 paintings in 30 days, our little painting studies. And I think we are going to work on um, some abstracted sort of berry floral-y shapes that I have my inspiration book open to. And I spilled glitter earlier, and of course there's glitter everywhere. Anyway, uh, I am going to start, of course, with my flat brush as always. I'm going to just take the sort of dried up grayish color, brownish grayish color that's on here, and I'm going to mix it with... Jane Davenport's 70s eyeshadow, which is a light blue. Brighter than I would normally pick, but the gray, of course, as you can see, tones it down a lot. I'm gonna add some water, kind of wash it out a little bit. And make sure our tape is pushed down, okay. I'm gonna put just just slap some on there. Just slap it on there. Don't worry about it. We're of course we're doing the background. You guys know I like to do the background before I do that focal image. Always. I'm gonna take some of. Oh, what color am I gonna? Use? I could use that same. Let's just stick with '70s eyeshadow for right now. I'm gonna put some of the paper, obviously, is still wet. I haven't dried anything. I'm gonna let it blend and do what it will. My husband's downstairs working in the garage, if you guys hear background noise. Okay, now I'm gonna take my sea sponge. It's dry, it's not wet. And I'm gonna just kind of do this. It just creates, gives this texture to the background. I'm going to dry it. I'll edges right. don't come out cleanly. It's because that little piece of tape wants to just poke up. So we'll see what happens at the end. Now I'm going to go to my round number three brush. And I'm going to take Jane Davenport's pink color that's in here called Best Friend. I do find that her colors tend to be more opaque than um, normal watercolors. They tend to be more gouache-like. I'm going to mix it here with just a little bit of that blue-gray color that we have. It's gonna purple it up just a little bit, which is fine. And I'm gonna just suggest some berry shapes here. I'm gonna do a few. I'm not gonna probably do more than three before I rinse the brush off. And then get things wet. The watercolor, you know, watercolor is uh, a simple creature. It's gonna go where the water is. It's not gonna force itself upon the dry spots. So if you want the watercolor to go a certain way, just put water there. Um, if you want to try to semi-control it, you have to control the water. So I'm gonna make three more shapes. Grab some of the pink straight from the pan and add that in. And then grab some water, which I would love to be able to tell you is clean water. It's not really, I've been painting a couple of paintings now today and it's not super clean anymore. Now, if you have a spot like this where the paint is puddling and it's not as varied in tone and um, movement as like this one is, 
um, just take your sort of damp but not super wet brush and just put it there and look at how it lifts up the water. And then you can take some of the pigment straight out of the pan with not too much water and add some color back if you lift too much up. I am gonna take um, the Quidocridone Magenta out of this other palette. That's my husband sneezing. Our allergies have just been crazy this year. I'm gonna add that darker red as a shadow color. I'm gonna go in with Moon Glow, which is a dark grayish purple. Just like that, and we're gonna give it a dry. Sticking with the round brush, I'm gonna go in with, I think, Undersea Green. Again, I'm gonna mix it sort of, um, tone it to the other colors that are in the painting by mixing it with the paint that's already on my little plate over here. I'm just gonna like add some stem shapes. I'm gonna switch to a bigger brush. Just blending out the colors and the green until I'm happy. If I think there's too much or, you know, I've put color in the wrong place, you can do that and lift it up. If it's too defined and I want it to be more suggestive, just have a rag or something nearby. I'm going to switch to, what color? Let's see, I'm gonna stick with the undersea green for a minute. Okay, and I'm gonna grab some Moon Glow, which is that dark purpley gray color. Gonna dry that. Okay, we're gonna go back to our round brush. I'm gonna go straight into Moon Glow. Try to define a few shapes. Not all of them. Just enough to tell you for sure what's going on in the painting, or at least to give the viewer a good Guess, yeah, that does, paint tape doesn't want to stick today. I don't know what the deal is. Okay, and then I'm going to go in with, um, this is a Jane Davenport paint. I think it's called Jiminy. Um, some days I can't read my own writing, so there's that. <laughs> Just going to put a little bit. It's a sort of a bright yellowy green color. And it her because her paints are more on the opaque side, and I know that they're not as transparent. You can sort of use them sometimes if you've lost too much of your highlight. Of course, being someone who started as a mixed media artist, I have nothing against using a gel pen or acrylic paint, or I think that's completely fine. I'm also gonna go in with that same pink color that we started out with called Best Friend and kind of do the same thing. I 
There we go. And let's give it a dry. Pull the tape. Well, that side's not too bad. Tape doesn't want to come off my fingers. Okay, let's see. That side's not too bad. Oh yeah, it didn't. It didn't sneak up under there. I thought it was going to. So there we go. Painting number twenty-two. All right, on to the next. How was that for today's painting? I hope you enjoyed the process. And um, if you want instruction on the painting, you need to be over on Patreon. They are going to get the talking version here on YouTube. You're just going to get the speed through, through version. Sorry. Um, if you'd like to support the free content here on Facebook or in the fa uh, here on Facebook, holy cow. If you'd like to support the free content here on YouTube or over in the Facebook art groups, I certainly would appreciate that. You can, of course, join Patreon. We do have YouTube membership here for a, a small fee. And um, also I have an Etsy shop and I have um, PayPal tip jar and all that stuff. So check out the video description. Relevant links will also be down there. And uh, yeah, don't forget the most important things. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Do share your work with me. I would love to see what you're doing. That's it for now. See you later. Bye, guys.